Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of our Return to Ravnica set review. We're going, dun, dun, dun. Uh, going through the whole set this week. You guys have been along for the ride if you're with us at this point. I'm Evan Irwin. I'm Brad Nelson. He is. I am. All day. And not on Sundays. Oh, that day you're not Brad Nelson. No. Uh, well, we are here talking about the Golgari cards today. Yes. And the black cards. Yes. And they're going to be sweet. They're awesome. Golgari is by far my favorite. It's going to be awesome. And today we are going to start with Corpse Jack Menace. He is your guild leader. He the will guild be, leader. He will be usable in your deck at the pre-release. That has already happened by the time you saw this. Yeah, and the best part about him is he goes along with the whole theme so much better than all the other ones. Like, he, he makes the benefit of all of the scavenge. Are you talking about, like, he works better with the mechanic? He works better with the uh, cards that have the mechanic in your deck. None of the other ones really go along with that theme. Like, sure. they have the ability, but he makes the ability better. He's like the lord. That's why I really like him as a captain. And that's fair. I, I think, and now that I sort of think about it, sort of like how all the lords work with their own mm -hmm. mechanics and things, um, the hypersonic dragon, I guess, just has that ability so you can, like, use overload spells at instant speed. Is that sort of the thinking in that way, in that regard? No, it's just people like to do things that flash because they think it's awesome. Yeah! Random yeah. growth! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, like, Alchemist <laughs> Refuge. <laughs> you know, get you. Um, but Corpse Jack Menace, I mean, for a 4-4 four, for four, 4, he's got some value. Yes. He's got some upsides. He's got some big upsides. Yeah, he's, he's huge. Like, I just want to open... Like, if, if you're Golgari, you open a Lotlatron, you're like, discard a creature, two oh counters. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah I mean, we need to make Lotlatron better and limited. <laughs> yeah, the card's not good enough, really. Like, the the idea that, you know, if you sort of get Lotlith and, like, Corpse Jack Menace in your opening hand, I'm pretty sure you just wait, you know, mm -hmm. and just wait it out so you can play your Menace and then play your Lotlatron and go completely insane. So, in Constructed... Yeah. Maybe because it's a four 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 and it's it so aggressively kind of, costed. And, and the cool thing about it is like you Dross Messenger, sure. it die you 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 play your Dross Messenger, you play course money as you attack, then you have a five four instead of a four three. That's pretty good. It's kinda cool. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. I think this could be in a green black zombie deck as a lordish thing that can give some of your guys benefits. Who knows? I think it's I think the Ability to give more counters is actually relevant when the creature itself can attack for actual damage. Yeah, and it's just, you know, it's, it's well cost. It's, you know. Four, four, fours are great. It's terrific. And uh, and I would be, I think, and this is for me where the reason I want to sort of to go, wanted to go Golgari for the pre-release. Because four, 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 four. <laughs> it's the most obvious, I think, sort of pushed card amongst the guild leaders. This and it's going to work really well with the rest of your Golgari cards. Yeah, it's going to work really, really well. Uh, Gerard's orders. I like this card a lot. Jerry played with it yesterday. It was actually kind of good. I, I I agree. I thought it was kind of good before I heard anyone playing with it. I mean, it seems <laughs> terrific. Four mana to not have literally any impact on the board at all is a little much. That's like the rough thing about it. Mm -hmm. But is this the part where you sort of play your first three turns, allowing you to do something good with it? Yes. You have to play lingering souls and and some blockers, and then you play this. And then you go, like, put something in your graveyard you want to unbarrel right its back, a Thrag Tusk in your hand. Mm -hmm. Or the cool thing is if you have, like, you can get to seven mana, you can put a human in your graveyard, like a, a Geist Hunter Bunk, mm -hmm. and put Angels of Glory's Rise in your hand, kill all the zombies, bring back the... Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. So, I, yeah, for me, this card is, I think it, it, it was, um, I wouldn't say it was pushed, but I would say it's, like, it's just perfectly costed. For me, you know, the ability to go find the two things you want, yep. put them in your hand. Like EDH players are going to love it. Q players are going to love it because it enables their reanimator decks. Like and in constructed, maybe. Yeah, I definitely. I, I think we'll see some constructed play. Wow, I think so. And I'll definitely see limited play. Yeah, for sure. And limited, like you just go find your two best creatures, you, or you find you like a really great creature and a scavenge yeah, guy. Yeah, you find a scavenge guy and a really good creature. Yep, and that's how it works. Now, treasured find. Just straight up regrowth. It's so good. Now regrowth did go to the graveyard and wasn't exiled. Yes. And that's part of why it was broken. You can make mm -hmm. chains and things. And that's why it does exile itself. But what do you think? Like it's recollect a little bit more aggressively costed. No, I, I think this card is pretty decent. The problem with it is the speed of the format. Like mm. that's just the that's why it's an uncommon. It's not a rare. Putting back a card in your hand isn't as good as it used to be one once before. But if there is a combo that you can fit green and black men into, mm. this card will be sick. Sure. I mean, I think the 
Um, back in the day, spells were a lot more powerful, mm -hmm. so regrowth with those spells were a lot more powerful, but today, you know, the creatures are better, so I think a lot of this is probably just going to be like a raised dead. Well, and it, and the problem is the it's fixed, right? The most powerful spells in the format that you'd want to copy get removed from the game. It's true. Like, if you could, like, combo a bunch of these with Temporal Masters, whew! Oh, yeah. That would be ridiculous, yeah, but you can't do that. So. Yep. And it's gone. Abrupt Decay. Coolest art in the set. Is that not the coolest art in the set? Stone Cold Nutter Butters. Butters. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Just slap it. Just sop it up with a biscuit. It's Would, so good. Well, Wizards, I like Legacy and Modern. Would you print one card to help me make both formats better? Well, sure we will, Hey, kids. guys. You like Smother? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to love this because holy cow. This card, A, amazing art. Uh, Svetlan Velenov, like Star City Games, has actually contracted Svetlan to make art for us because he is so terrific. Yeah. And this card, I mean, wow. Wow, wow. I don't, like, everyone was just wowing. It was just wow, wow, wow. Do you like the Pester Mike Kiki Jiki combo? Yeah. Do you like getting all your spells countered by counterbalance? Well, not anymore. Ah. I mean, the card really does it all. Like, that's just joking around, but yeah. like, in a real world, the best part is it's not going to be that good in standard. No, it's not. It's just not going to be that good in standard. It's going to be good. No. It's just not going to be that good. No. It, it's I'm playing Green Black Zombies without this card in it. All right. I wanted to play it, and then they printed Golgari Charm, and I was like, all right, well, I don't need to destroy enchantments anymore. Well, I mean, yeah, Golgari Charm just sort of does all the things you wanted it to do. Yeah, so the, the reason that Abrupt Decay I don't think is going to see much constructive play is most of the creatures that cost one, two, or three aren't worth killing. Yeah. You'd rather kill with combat? Or waste a card on, right? Yeah, and then everything else is what you want to kill. So you can't kill anything big, but this card kills Liliana, Seismic Assault, uh, Counterbalance, mm. Pester Mites, and, and uh, Deceiver Exarchs. Yep. Like, it's going to be so good in the older formats, it's it, unreal. It does work. Now, I, I think ultimately sort of in standard is that it doesn't kill Restoration Angel, yes. which is such a huge deal. But in older formats, like the black green, like and like I said in the show, I think this card by itself makes Bayou more expensive because mm -hmm. all the green black decks got way better. And I'm happy to see things that hate on counterbalance. Yep. Counterbalance top is just like grueling and it's kind of miserable. And I hated it in construct in standard. I hated it in extended. I hate it in legacy. And this card says no. I mean, yeah, it just deals, it, it deals with that though, but it deals with counterbalance. It deals with Stoneforge Mystic. It deals with Goblin Lackey. Yep. It deals with Tarmogoyf. Like, it's so efficient at everything it does. It kills Sylvan Library, like Delver, Delver, everything. <laughs> like anything that people play in Legacy, it kills. Like I am going to build. I want to go to Cincinnati because I want to play Bug Control too. Screw it, I'm going eight hours to go. So I will see you in Cincinnati. This yeah, you will. Right yeah. here, right, right at the open, Ow. doing well. Ow, your ring. My finger vibrated. <laughs> it's seriously vibrating right now. <laughs> pain, pain, dead bridge <laughs> Goliath, pushed, ha. Yes. Wow. This card. Do you ever remember the day when a 4-4 four, four for 5 had a downside, not a ridiculous upside? Yeah, just a straight, like, you know, they can put in legendary creatures from their hand. That was the... All right, so I want to live that the was dream. The this is what I want to do. I want, like, tell me about it. I want to scavenge on to Nighthawk. <laughs> That's what I want to do. You greedy, greedy man. I swear. I what, am just what, happy. What? No. What? Oh, no. No. What? No. Now. You are, you what? Are, you are on the chair. I don't know what it's called. I'm not a lawyer. No, it's okay. I'm on the witness stand. You're on the witness stand right. right now. You talk about Christmas, Magic Christmas all the time with these 80 card combos that you can't fit into a single deck. <laughs> and I say I want to scavenge onto a creature. You're like... You are the greediest man alive. If you are not trying to epic experiment a ter like a primal surge, then you are just ridiculous. You're Brad just Nelson. wrong. What? Wrong, wrong, wrong. That's right. What? So I can give you crap because you're a good player. Leave me alone. This card's amazing. It's I love this card. Going. Okay, so here's four mana for five five. Like just by itself. Mm -hmm. Good card. All right, you don't want this yet. I know this isn't what you guys want. But I, I like looking at cards, how they're going to stand alone in the set they're in. Okay. So I play a lot of block. Or okay. I like to. I haven't liked a lot of the last couple block formats, okay. but I think I'm going to like this one. And what he says is he doesn't die to Abrupt Decay. He doesn't die to Mizium Mortars. Yep. Two of the biggest removal spells in the set. Right. Now, he still dies to uh, Ultimate Price and Sphere. Okay. 
but it's still just an awesome magic card and like I think he's going to be an all-star once I mean, he might be good now, but he's fighting versus a lot of things. Right. I mean, like, you can look at, like, Blastoderm or something. Like, I, I was, I mean, I went through the entire history of Magic. Two green, two colorless, five, five. There are so, like, it just without a drawback, they just don't really exist. They have some yeah. sort of draw. You know, they have Shroud, so you can't target them. And they certainly don't have, like, an awesome ability once they die. No. You know, like, this... Just, wow. Just, yeah. I'm impressed. Last thing I want to say about this card is I'm no blend Bywise, but I feel like this card is going to be a $1 card until it's a $7 card. Mm. Sometime in the next year and a half, it's just going to be insane. And then, right back down? No, it'll or be like, well, until it rotates. Going? It's not going to keep going, but like, it's just going to have no respect hmm. until Rodney Dangerfield shows up, and then it'll have respect. No, I mean, it won't have any respect until like, maybe Innistrad leaves. And then it'll actually become a really good card. I, I do think that this will be uh, a played spell once we don't have so many awesome Hunt Masters and Restoration Angels and things. So mm. we're not going to see a ton of play right now, but keep your eye out for that Death Bridge Glide because I think the card is really pushed. His day in the sun may not be right now, mm -hmm. but I mean, you, on his raw stats, he just cannot be ignored. No. They, they went all the way on that one. And Death Rite Shaman. Oh, oh, oh. The card no, is no, this card is, I love this card. Wow. I, the instant I saw it, I was just like... And then and then I read A Graveyard, and I was just like... Oh, oh the A Graveyard is ridiculous. So, oh, my God, I love you so much. Well, that's the only reason I like this card. So, like... It's great. Can I go off? Is this my chance to go off on a card? Go! All right. I got the floor, boys. All right. The first ability is not that relevant for what I want to do with this card. I want to play this card in, like, zombies or aggressive decks. I want... But this is the dream. You want Magic Christmas Land? Let's do it, man. He's on the play. He goes turn one, evolve, and wants the tax cards. We play him. What do we play turn two? Ah! Duroff's Messenger. Oh! Hey <laughs> it's awesome. But yeah, like, I think wow. being able to steal their Lingering Souls and their their card advantage is based on their graveyard. Mm -hmm. You're able to do that. You're able to kill Duroff's Messengers. It's yet another card I hate Snapcaster Mage. I mean, it just, like, I this like card, the card does well. all the things. Think of it as a Grim Lava Mancer. It doesn't do anything to the board, yep. but it can it can do things to the board, like steal Drush Messengers uh, while they're triggered on the stack, mm -hmm. or their Grave Crawlers. It can take away Lingering Souls. You can gain life or make them lose life. Like, keeping up an Overgrown Tomb for him is worth it. Yeah. The card was, like, we did a playtest video that you'll see in a, next week that, like, if I had this in play, I couldn't lose, and if I didn't have it, I wasn't winning. Yeah. It was that good. By himself, a one mana one two with like three amazing, terrific, like crazy good abilities. And yes. Just it, it excels, it's making them lose life, you're gaining life, it slices, it dices, Julianne fries the whole bit. Like this card is awesome. Yeah, I, and you don't even need oh. to play you don't even need to build to make its abilities good. Just play zombies and put it in the deck. God, it so goes nice. in the deck. Yeah, it's just it's just good. It just I, I I love it. I love all this card. I want this card to be so good. Yes. I cannot wait. Uh, I already have a standing wager with Mr. Thompson, and that in the next year he gave me a whole year to have this be in a legacy top eight. Are you kidding me, Evan? You're Evan Irwin. You could say, get me a plastic fork in the top eight of a legacy open. <laughs> and somebody, like 18 people in a tournament that are good, will play 14 cards and plastic fork in their sideboard. <laughs> that will happen. It's like, I can't believe this card is so good. <laughs> it's pushing. It's terrific. Now, Drudge Beetle, like, you know, we're starting to get into our... Average, cool, good cards. Bear with upside, even if it's like way late in the game. Yep. It's awesome. I love bears and limited. I mm -hmm. really do. Uh, and with a late game upside, it's great. Like, I think they had this card. They started this card for scavenge of four, yep. and then five, and then finally six. found six. Because I think because they found people will yep. pay it. They yep. don't care. It's just like, uh, it feels a lot like to like sort of silent departure. You know, it's just a one mana unsummon. If you want it again, you'll pay whatever it is. Yep. It doesn't matter. Like, you you know, you make the flashback cost or the scavenge cost or whatever high, doesn't matter. You're yeah. still going to play it. It's still on curve, and it's still a great late game. Yeah, I, I, I love this card. I think it's going to see a ton of play in Limited. Yep. And I'm excited because when you flood, you got stuff to do. Who mm -hmm. cares if it was a bear that died? I'm making a different guy bigger. Yep. So constructed. No, Limited, All-Star will be a great card. Now, Golgari Decoy, speaking of Limited All-Stars, this guy, like, this guy lets you Alpha Strike. Yes, I, he, I think it's it's <sighs> another just, in there. It's another ridiculous magic card I don't like, but it's fine. 
Oh. I hate when I'm forced to you not you interact. Ha you hate game enders is what I'm yeah, sort of getting I hate the, game enders. the feeling of. Like overruns and the overload spells that make yeah. them unblockable and the whole bit. Like there, those things need to exist, buddy. What are you talking about? All right, so we're playing a game, right? We're oh, now we're playing a game. We're playing Monopoly. Oh, is it playing? We're playing Monopoly. Yeah, Monopoly drags on forever. Do you know that? And we're getting complicated, and now we're like, well, now I have to try to hit this, so then he can't hit, like, even or odd, or, you know, figuring out the board state. And then some guy just walks up to the board and just flips it over and walks away, and we're like, oh, our game is over. And then you're but like, I was just getting started. And now we can play again. Because Monopoly drags on for hours and makes me want to kill bad, myself. Bad. Bad example? Or, or just could be an example. Like, yeah, risk. We're playing a game of risk. Okay. And then somebody just shows up and he's like, I'm the UFOs. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> Who wants UFOs and risk, people? I do. Go <laughs> guard um, decoy. I just made someone a million dollars, didn't I? You really did. <laughs> They're going to make UFOs and risk. And like a World War One game where mm -hmm. it's like, oh, by the way, we're pretending aliens exist. Right, and then the spaceship showed up. Everyone's racing to get to the plant so they can get alien weaponized. Wow. Weaponized alien style. There you go. <laughs> Men in blackish. <laughs> All right, no. back to magic cards. Okay, magic. Golgari decoy. Good because it breaks the game open. Great because it has scavenge. Bad because Brad doesn't like it. Card sweet. Golgari Gilgate. One of the worst because it's not blue. But the art is awesome. Art is terrific, man. These Guild Gates, man, they went all out. Yeah, I like the. It's so weird that I like most of the art of the Guild Gates more than the actual. Yeah, the uh, actual shock lens. Yeah. Now, when we get to the black cards, we'll see that there are. There's a, an ogre jailbreaker, for example, mm -hmm. that needs a gate in order to attack, and that's actually one of the cards that I f sort of feel makes these all playable. Now, again, we're probably talking still unlimited anyway, yeah. so that means these are good and limited. Period. So it, when you're limited, great. Constructed, no, and that's okay. Yeah, you're going to want the fixtures because I don't think uh, only two color decks will exist. I think we'll we'll be playing some three color decks like sure. we were before, and the guild gates can help, especially since there's going to be so many of them floating around. Yeah, I mean they have all the guild gates and there's the key runes and stuff like they gave yep. you the the tools to do more than yes. just play the one guild you're looking at. Speaking of key runes, it's the Golgari key mm, rune. The insect. It's going to kill you. Oh, it has Death Touch. This is probably one of my favorite ones. Just I like it. Because when you flood, you don't need the mana, so you can trade with anything. Right. That's why I really, I like this one. I like this one, yeah, because it just trades it all the way up. Hey, but it threats. Just having it and two lands open, mm -hmm. it's just a threat of a Death Touch. So, like, your opponent's just like, ah, all my ground counters. Can't with my big guy. This is actually, trade with your little, like, three mana artifact. This card's probably really good and limited. Just yeah. for the fact that it just sits there and, like, it doesn't, they can't use sorcery speed removal on it. Yeah. So they're like... Guess I'll never attack with the 6-6 six, six ever, ever again. <laughs> I mean, you know, compare this one to, like, the Azat one, right? The Azat one, it turns into a 2-1. The 2-1 that has to hit you in order to do it's something. It's really bad. It's really bad. And this guy, like, just, yeah, come on. Come at me, bro. But I'm betting, come at me. I'm betting the way the set's designed, you don't want key runes in, in, in green and black, but where you really want to overload. So the, the actual ability of adding mana is more important. In That's the fair. But as a key Wizards rune, smart. They they spend time on these sets. They know what they're doing. Now a five mana five four, green or black, not setting any records. Just a good fine magic card. Yeah, this is another uh, exactly another one of those spells. Just like when I had the uh, the guild windrake mm -hmm. that I like because it is a card that has seen play in both colors, but now it can be either of them. Yep. And I love it. I love these options that you get with the cards like this. Very few hybrid cards, but the one they use it on, it's just like flavorfully costed yeah. perfectly. Yeah, exactly. I like this card a lot. Uh, just a good solid beater and limited, not so much in constructed. Grizzly Salvage, though, constructed worthy. Hello. Do you remember a time earlier this week when I said hmm. that there was an instant that should have been hmm. a sorcery? Hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know. Just a mm -hmm. Well, sure. this is it because this makes no sense as an instant. Brah. I played with the card and I wanted to cast it as a sorcerer every time because what if I hit a lingering souls? I want to be able to flash it back. Huh? What if I hit an ability rights? I want to be able to flash it back. What if I want an arbor elf? I want to cast it. You know, you go I, turn one manic cell. Right. Uh, arbor elf turn one. Well, or 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 you play your. Uh, your death, death right shaman. Okay, I'm okay well, with that. Well, you want to cast Ooh. this, so then you can go put oh. your Abyssin pilgrim into play. Oh, turn one death right shaman, turn two this thing. Yeah. Oh wow. 
The, the, what sucks is you'll also be going turn two mulch, which is real bad with him. Yeah. Because you're forced to take him. Eh, okay. But, gosh, that, yeah, I mean, is a creature, well, a creature or land amongst them in your hand. Well, yeah, this one's awesome with, with Death Rite Shaman, but mulch is bad with Death Rite Shaman. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, the, but, but Grizzly Salvage, you know, in that deck will do just work. Oh, I, no, it, it's awesome in the deck. I was super surprised it was instant. It makes no sense. I mean, don't don't be complaining about stuff being instant, buddy. This is not the part where Wizards thinks that we're upset about this because I'm terrifically excited about I'm, cards. I'm upset. Being Why instance. is it instant? I, mean, it's, yeah, I, don't I want, want answers now. So anyone that's from Wizards watching this, thank you for the support, and I love you watching my shows. But respawn now. Tell me why. Oh, I'm sorry. You're done. Okay. <laughs> Gerard Kokari Lichlow is next. It was in the dual decks. It was in Golgari versus the Zed. I, I didn't know this, and now I just to totally threw away the Invitational. Uh, how'd you do that? Because uh, I didn't play this in Legacy. What? Because it was in the dual decks. I could have played it. That's true. I could have figured out a combo for it, and I just didn't. And you could have maybe. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I think it's it's a cute card. I don't think it's a very powerful card. No. It it has potential, but ultimately the sacrifice in the swamp and the forest is a little too much. You can tap those swamps and forests for mana before you sacrifice them, which is kind of cool. I think it's an awesome general. Right, but as a as a general, it'll be way better. You know, you sacrifice another creature and they're losing life, mm -hmm. and you scavenge it back, and the whole bit. So it, it's a lot of cool cool stuff happening. Yeah. But cool stuff rarely wins games. Like it's just it's cool, but it doesn't further you. No. And yeah. a lot of these abilities are just And resources like, are too important in standard as opposed to like EDH where you get a lot of time to build up your resources. But right. in standard, sacking two lands to put him into play is really bad. You're putting yourself back big time. Yep. And sacrificing another creature of yours, if it either doesn't give like an immediately an immediate bonus like a draw messenger or something, then you, eh, you're kind of reaching. But, but limited all-star. Limited terrific all-star. Yeah, absolutely. You'll enjoy that one. Karazda Guildmage, because they couldn't think of a better name, Karazda. What's Karazda? Peace me. Um, it feels like it's like the Karazda Honda. Ooh, the new from Honda. All right, so the 2-2 two, two for 2. Target creature gets plus 1, plus 1, and Intimidate. That's a good ability. This card is insane. This card this is card ridiculous. <laughs> it, do, it does good like, things. Like, oh man, my opponent is trying to uh, unleash me. Well, I'm just going to sec this guy. And make infinite yeah, duders. Block sack, make a bunch of duders. Yep, yeah, block sack, make yeah. more duders. Like it's so good. Yeah, yeah. They this one is certainly one of the best ones, and it's okay that like the abilities aren't necessarily congruent because both of them. What are happens in a board terrific. stall after you've created a bunch of one one saverlings? Hmm. hmm. Oh, you get to intimidate and attack them. Mm, you do. Good luck blocking. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh, that is so well then. I think it's really good. Uh, in limited. Fantastically, freakily, freakishly fantastic. In standard, mm. well, yeah, no, not in standard. Karazda Monitor. Speaking of our Karazda friends, yeah, this card is fine. The new Chevy Karazda. It's this is. I think I'm calling this as one of the weaker scavenge cards. I mean, it's one of the weaker, but I think again, this is more like the bear, right? You know, where yeah. I think like the mana cost for scavenge probably kept creeping upwards. Yeah. You know, it was probably five, and then maybe it was six, and now it's seven. But a four four three three trampler is a fine card. Yeah. But now that it has upside when it dies, it's even better. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I mean it's fine. Yeah. It's a hill giant. It's it's it it is an okay magic card. In limited, it's a fine beater. You will run it. You will not be unhappy with it. I will be unhappy with Hill Giant. Nowhere close to constructed, but it's a cool card. Now one that is right in the middle of constructed is Lawless Troll. Yeah, I don't think this card's gonna see any constructed play. <laughs> Just kidding. This guy. I'm so funny. This guy. I make a joke. He does. Now, <laughs> the Law Troll, as everyone's going to call him, uh, because Wizards really, Lawless, you can do anything better than that. Law Troll is awesome, though. Law Troll is sweet, but yeah. like, oh, the names. Yeah. Anyway, regardless, the fact that it's like tearing flesh off. Oh, something God. Is yeah. The, the art is ridiculous. It's so good. awesome and creepy. It crap. takes me into that world. Like, I, I look at the art and it instantly makes me, like, a little uneasy because you see right. something scary eating and, like, it's just weird. Yeah. It's a, it's a freakish thing. And to have regenerating, a regenerating trampler that can get bigger is mm -hmm. just amazing. Like, yeah. regenerating tramplers, period, are scary. And this one can get stupidly crazy huge, really, really And we've quick. seen a lot in testing with uh, G, uh, GBBs, yep. where it's just like, 
Turn three, lot, lot with troll, discard Gravecrawler, play Gravecrawler, go. Oh. You know, you just, anytime you have a lot with troll, yeah, anytime you have a lot with troll, Gravecrawler, you just discard it and put it into play for zero lots except you get a token. Yep. It's, it's stupid. It's like so gross. It's so good. So, yeah, the, the basically all of the decks in standard from the point where Ravnica is legal will have to make sure they can handle a lot lawless troll. How? Oh. Well, with, with whatever means necessary. We haven't figured that one out yet. I mean, literally, you, you might have to just bust out the arrest. Uh, we were busting out the uh, Bonds of Faith. Yeah, something, yeah. right? I mean, you uh -huh. need something. This card is insanely yeah. powerful. Bonds of Faith is like our new answer to this guy. Yeah. I mean, you need something, He's man. He's so good. He is a constructed all-star. He's a limited all-star. You will never be happy playing him in either format. You'll never not be happy. Uh, yeah, you'll never not be happy. I apologize. Because, wow. Overgrown Tomb, not as good artwork as the last one. <laughs> Whatever. That's just us being picky. It's a shock yeah. land. It's terrific. You're going to play it. You're going to love it. It's going to be worth plenty of money. For as long as it's in standard, or even past them because of modern. I think you're wrong. I think it's only going to be worth 50 cents. You should sell them all to me now. All, all those. All sell them to me personally before they go to 50 cents each. I'll give you 51. 52 Dollars. dollars. All right, you're getting all mine, buddy. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> Rights of reaping. Just now, a throwback to consume strength. Yeah, pretty or much. Consume right. hunger, or whatever. Cons it was yeah, I think it was strength. It was yeah. just like you know, kill this, pump that. Instead, you pay more mana, and you really kill this, and you really pump that. Taste it. I will like to taste that because I can't <laughs> wait to do it. <laughs> it tastes pretty good. That's what it does. Oh, like. I will drink that Kool Aid, sir. <laughs> I, I'm listening. <laughs> it's, it's great. It's weird. I don't know. Go grab grape. Uh, <laughs> What? If they made, like, you know, guild-flavored chewing gum, it, it would, would be, be Golgari Grape. It'd be blood. They're all zombies. That's gross. But that's what it would be. We're not here to gross out the people watching us at home. Yes, we are. That's our goal. We are? Yeah. Oh, disgusting. Now, Rites of Reaping, a limited, terrific... No, no, no. <laughs> a terrific... <laughs> no means no. Except <laughs> when the camera's off. Rites of Reaping is a terrific card in Limited. You yep. won't see any constructed play, but in Limited, you're going to love this card. It is going to have a sweet, you know, at least a one for one, and if not a two for one, because then they're going to have to block your now huge monster. You know, if you're like, if I have a three three and I kill your thing and this is now a six six and you're at six life, you, you have to stop it. The card is fine. Um, being sorcery kind of sucks. Being sorcery sucks, but it's Why couldn't we have Grizzly Selvage be a sorcery and this card be an instant so it was awesome because it cost six freaking mana. That's not how development works. You don't just take sorcerer over here and instant over there and just ha da 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 da. Development is not a shell game. I would make it one. <laughs> well, sometimes you kind of feel it might be one. Um, <laughs> Sewer Shambler is up next. It is a three mana two one swamp walk with scavenge. I feel like this if it good. is a Sewer Shambler, oh never, never mind. That makes sense. Yep. I was I was gonna go down this whole path of if it's a sewer and the entire world of Ravnica There's is an entire city. city. Why doesn't it have all walk? Mm. But then I thought about it, all the other sewers are functioning, right. except for Golgari when they're all like polluted and rotted by zombies. And gross and stuff, yeah. yeah. So I think of all the scavenge sort of uh, scavenge costs, I think this one probably is the most pushed. aggressively, yeah. They really pushed this guy. I mean, by himself, a three mana two one swamp walk is not very exciting, but with scavenge, for he becomes three mana? He's, he's very good. Three mana give a creature plus two plus two? Worth it. Yeah, and for sure. And we'll let you win races and get bigger than your opponent's creatures mm -hmm. and the whole bit. Uh, terrific, terrific card and limited. No constructed uses. Sorry. <laughs> Slitherhead. I like him. <laughs> I don't, but I have a funny story. Ruben, I, I, Ruben got to preview this card. Yes, he did. And for like a month, he's like, what about Slitherhead? Are you going to play Slitherhead? And I'm like, no, dude, the <laughs> card sucks. No, you, you should really play Slitherhead. Do you know you get a target Dross Messenger and then they can't mm -hmm. get it back? I'm like, yes, it's still bad. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, we're trying to build this one deck. He's like, what about Slitherhead? Have you tried Slitherhead? It, it would be good in this deck. And I'm like, <laughs> of course, of course. I know. Because <laughs> it was know. his first preview. And he's like, it's I got his a first preview. preview. I remember when I got mine. And I was just like, it goes with everything. It's just the best card of all time. <laughs> just because you have the first look doesn't make it I the mean, best card. L Luis did it this time, too. He got a little bit of the pre-release. Uh, he got a, yeah, a little, yeah. little hype going on on that one yeah. with the uh, removal spell or whatever. But <laughs> yeah, Slitherhead. 
Best it's art fine. in the set. Literally the best art ever. It's really good. I don't know if I'd call it the best art, but I would call it extremely, extremely good. It do, it's an octopus inside of a... It's a slithery oh, scully duder guy. No, the, the skull is dead. It's an octopus that's wearing it as a hat because he's at a Halloween party. Man, you got a whole story of this thing, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> you gonna write some fanfic for Slither I don't Red? do much at home. <laughs> <laughs> get you out, bro. Yeah, I know. We're it's going to really bad. It's bad. <laughs> Real bad. All right. Slitherhead, in limited, fine card? No. Come on. It's a one, one for one. What are my rules? Oh, don't start with your rules again. But I have to have rules for limited. Look, man, I don't live by rules. <laughs> I live by my own set of rules. That's right. I'm a wild dog. In my world. <laughs> I'm just going to just like peel out of here <laughs> with my slither hands. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm just, look. <laughs> I'm just going to be on top of my head and be all like, you know, fucking around <laughs> crazy. <laughs> We're gonna rule this meta game. Like you get just, pulled over for going like seven over the cops and just like, never mind. Just <laughs> you're, you're good. good. You're good. <laughs> My own rules. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just I like, can't help it. Slitherhead being a scavenger zero is cool. Being a scavenger cool. zero is cool. You know what else is cool? <laughs> Your last story. <laughs> I don't know how functional it is. Fine, sluice my scorpion. <laughs> now this card is awesome. Okay, this card is very good. Yeah, Death Touch. Now, this is an aggressively cut scavenge, too. Uh, I agree. Yeah, because yeah. you can, like, play it. It trades. Next turn, pump a guy attack. It's so, I love this card. Yep, yeah. This is a card that stops them from attacking more than, more than likely. And this is a great card when you're behind on mana, when you're, like, missing a couple end drops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really it, like this card. It gives you time to sort of catch up. And it's a cheap scavenge, so if you don't have anything to do, if you still miss another land drop and you can't do anything, you can just, like, scavenge again. Yeah. Yeah, definitely like this guy a lot. Don't have a great story for him. Sorry. The, the mood's coming down again. <laughs> if you were going to match that Slitherhead story. <laughs> but the, the Sluiceway Scorpion is a fine card. I'm glad they pushed it. You need pushed cards. It's all gold. Yeah. It's cool. I like it a lot. Why does it have reach? Eh, because it's a little tiny scorpion. <laughs> Stone Fair Crocodile, 3-2 three, for 3, and you can make it gain lifelink. Okay. Why? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why does the crocodile gain life? Yeah, especially this one. This looks like straight out of Peter Pan. Yeah. The crocodile looks like he just got out of Peter Pan. He just ate Captain Hook's hand and, yeah, yeah TikTok and... Maybe that's why he has lifelink. Yeah. Because a little bit of... He got a little fairy dust when he put the hand. Uh, a little fairy dust, yeah. I get pixie dust. Stuff. They're pixies in that, right? Uh, it's pixies, fairies? fairies, it's something. Either way, on its, on its face... Good and limited? Yes, it's a 3-2 three, for 3. I, I, three twos for 3 are definitely playable. And actual upside is pretty awesome, even if it's only getting lifelink. Like, the cool thing about this card is it comes down right away and dies, but it trades for a card. Right. But when you top deck it late game, you have extra mana, and then you can just give it lifelink. So mm -hmm. I, I like, I, you don't see a lot of cards designed this way, mm -hmm. but I really like it. A 3-2 three, for 3 that has an ability that's pretty overpriced, so you don't use it early, but in the late game, it gives your mid... Middle creatures, some like late game longevity. That's right. really that's what Golgari is. It's longevity. Right. Well, it also gives you something to do. You know and what it, I mean? Like and part and of goes, you have all this mana, and you can build your own Bane Slayer when you have Scavenge. That's A lot true. of these cards are designed to be good in the mid game, good in the late game. Right. And and, and this just goes with it. Like scavenging, you know, plus two plus two from the mm -hmm. sluice way. All of a sudden, a five four that can gain life link. That that's no joke. No. That's that's scary stuff. In canon games, uh, Terrace Worm. Seven mana for a five five with scavenge of seven. I haven't seen this card. It is it is it is what it looks like. It's, yeah, it's a very big zombie worm. It's just like itself all over again. It's the five five and then it gives plus five plus five for the same cost. Like once you've gotten to the point where you can cast this guy, you know that it's going to like come back and get you. The card seems yeah. really good. No, I think I think it will be decent just because it is two lives, it goes for a long time. Like you definitely have to pick up a lot of removal to make cards like this good. Mm-hmm. Just because it's such a heavy mana requirement, but uh, on its own, it's a good finisher. I think it's very good, probably in the mirrors too. Right. Uh, it, it seems terrific for me. You know, like remember the Minotaur, seven yeah. mana for a six-two first strike haste, and now this is seven mana for a five-five with scavenge of the same cost. I just can't wait until we're like Minotaur, Schminotaur, we're this, and then they fight, and the Minotaur's like, now I'll show you. Rawr, yeah, <laughs> see what I did there? Blocked you all day, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. So that's what they do. I like that card. It's gonna be really good and limited. Obviously, yeah. nowhere near Construct. Uh, Trestle Troll. Trestle Troll. I like him a lot. Yeah, he's good. He yeah, just he just walks just all day. with Reach. Yeah, it's just good. 
It gives you time right. for your scavenge guys to actually do something. Right. I was going to say, and also if they have, you know, like really, really powerful flyers or whatever, you can also scavenge onto him, mm -hmm. regenerate him. He just holds the board while you're seven mana, Wait, five, five what, worms. What, do, what is the flying keyword ability? Mm -hmm. Detain. 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 And what does that do? Oh, it messes up a troll. Oh. For one turn. We troll about the troll, right. but it's true. He's bad against Detain. <laughs> He's bad, okay. But that's just I mean, it, right? Like, most creatures in their own way can be bad against Detain because, you know, they man, can be stopped. <laughs> like, I love this. I love that that Detain beats up really hard on Gogar. Gogar beats up really hard on Is It. Yep. Uh, or Rakdos, on Rakdos, yeah. yeah. No, Rakdos beats up on, no, Rakdos beats up on Azurias. Yes, because Golgari so beats fast. up on Is It. Yep. Um, Celestia beats up way bad on Rakdos. Oh, yeah. And I think Golgari could also has probably a good, good Celestia matchup. I like it. Because it makes big creatures. Mm -hmm. and this is weird. Touch. Magic's weird right now. It's great. What are you talking about? It's, Magic's uh, always no, changing. I, I'm That's seeing the, the best part. No, but I'm seeing the design. I didn't think about this till now. Okay. I really didn't think about it till now. I'm geeking out on it. All right, now I get to run back my favorite joke from the show on Vraska. Now, Vraska, when you play her ultimate, Makes three assassins to kick your assins. <laughs> no, you know what's the best part? You can just run back the worst thing you've ever said. Three black dudes, seriously? Mm -hmm. You can finally be right if you went with that. God, I like how that's like literally the best token producer of all time. I know it is. It's just the most absurd card ever. Whatever. Vraska the Unseen, how do you feel about it? I'll tell you what, it's no Jace. I mean, I think a lot of people got excited about this. For me, it, the reason I didn't get real excited about it is because no, it's, it doesn't do anything. So I have an idea one. why it's more it costs more than Jace right now. Because okay. everyone has to pick up one for their EDH decks and their and their cubes because it actually it seems really good in EDH because it does it it's a cheap like Nicol Bolas effect to kill like other non like permanents like. Yeah. Sort Killing of. other walkers is awesome. And making assassins has to be the c coolest casual thing ever. That's pretty cool. Like, bring on my assassins. And they'll, like, grab, like, some from, like, movies. Like, you have, like, <laughs> Nikita over here, even though she's really bad and that show is really bad. But then you'll have, like, you have, like Nikita and you'll have, like, James Bond. Yeah, and like Leon from The Professional. Yeah, you know, and you're just like, dun, 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 dun. They're coming Kill to you. Kill you. And what if you, and oh, go. <gasps> You what? ultimate it, and they're like, oh, that's cute. And then you're like, Cyclonic Rift. Whoa! Assassin three of you. Whoa! You lose. <laughs> and they like harm's way, and then you both lose. Ooh. Oh, man. Naughty. <laughs> but five mana for five for five loyalty and a sort of a Maelstrom, uh, Maelstrom Pulse-esque, mm -hmm. Vindicate-esque ability is good. Not bad at no. all. My problem is that like it's uh, plus one just doesn't. Do anything. Nothing at all. It's it, like it's just I just literally just turn the turn the dice and then okay. That's go. What happened. Go. Yeah. And they're like, uh, attack here, Veraska. You're like, oh, he's never read it before. He's never read it. He's never oh read it. Oh my god, oh my god. And then he turns around and he reads it, you know, and then you got a reader, and then like, okay, stuff. And then they're like, okay, but my god, in the graveyard. And then they still beat you because you're playing Veraska. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not that bad. It's just not it's, bad. No, it's very bad. Okay, it's bad. Xanakev Locust. Xanakev? I like this card so much. It's very good. So much. Three mana, or six mana for a three three flyer is not bad. That but scavenge, scavenge is pushed. for four mana. Well, that's just it, right? If the card is good on its own, it's scavenge costs a lot. And if the card, they over cost it somewhere. Right, right. They're doing the push pull. Like, and that's yeah. what you like. I mean, that's what I like about Magic is we're the, seeing how they sort of walk this tightrope yeah. of like how they can push things in different ways. And. You know, six mana, three, three flyer, eh, but like scavenge a four, and you're like, oh, yeah, oh, get yeah. there. Card's well, good. You no, know, this card is going to see a lot of play. I really like it. Yeah, it's good. It's uncommon for a reason, and will make all of your limited decks, will make none of your constructed. Dreg Mangler, however, will make your constructed decks, I think, at least some of them. Maybe not the best on the planet, but I think <laughs> certainly at first, it's going to see play. Yes. Because people are going to want this to work. This is going to be in like all the zombie decks right off the bat, because right. it's just like a super powerful three drought that has haste on it, curve it's bigger than all the other zombies it's just a it's fast like the card's really good and the picture's awesome 
picture is totally sweet, and it does what you want it to do. Yeah. It hits the board, it gets you. The scavenge is not like super aggressively costed, but it is good, and we'll see lots and lots of play. Yeah. Uh, it'll be terrific and limited, no doubt. For sure. I, yep. love, I love the card. You'll be very happy playing with this one for sure. Now, our last official Golgari card is Golgari Charm. Bam. bam. Oh, love oh, this card. card. Best <laughs> charm in the set, and this is why. Zombies can't beat Knight of Glory. Golgari Charm kills it. It kills all the tokens that come along with them. Mm -hmm. Kills the enchantments, and you can Alpha Strike your opponent Woo! and regenerate. It's good. It's so the good. The card's retarded. It's so good. Like I remember when we like when when I first saw it and I first posted it on Facebook and I saw it on, on MTG Salvation, and everyone was just like, "Ah, uh, like this is even this is even good. What does it do?" And, I, and then like. Detention sphere, you know, sort of showed up, and everybody's just like, "Oh, that'll like destroy all the grave crawlers and the dross messengers." And then they're like, "Oh yeah, this charm kind of solves all that problem." And a lot of the ways you would kill people is just through blood artist triggers, and this gives you plenty of them. Yep. I mean, like, it, the goodness goes on and on and on. Like, this card is way, way better than people thought it was. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. I'm loving, loving, absolutely loving this card. I love so, it. so now we go to the black. Oh, we're going to the black cards. It's getting crazy up in here. We're starting with Dark Revenant. When it, it never dies. It's just hanging around forever and ever for four mana. Oh, I don't like it. I hate cards like this. I don't I like it because for me, it always puts me in this stupid loop. Like, yeah, you get stuck with it. Somebody's going to have two Staticasters and just yeah. make me hate my life. <laughs> it's like, I never, I, A, you're never going to be able to play this card again. And B, if you keep trying, they're just going to keep putting it back on top yeah. of your library. It's, good. it's a good card, and, and, but the problem is in limited magic, you're trying to grow to something. Mm. And so you might have this guy, but never hit your like fifth or sixth land for your sixth drop, or trying to dig to your awesome cards. Yeah. Like every time this goes on top of your deck, you're not getting deeper in your deck. So if your deck sucks, this card's awesome. But if your deck is good, you don't want it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like what's gonna happen is you'll be in a situation where like you're, you're sort of like it's a real tense p mm -hmm. moment in the game and it's sort of late game and like what's going to happen and they will kill your Dark Revenant just because it time ebbs to the top of your library. Because they know the only way they can't lose mm. is to ensure that you don't draw anything. I could actually see it being really good in an Unleashed deck just because it's like you put like three Unleashed guys on the board and then mm -hmm. you're like, well, for the next the rest of the game, I get a jump block. Block. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Block. block. Go. Get you, get you, get you in the meantime. Yeah. I've never drawn a land. I mean, you know, again, this sort of like this is a card that can go both ways for me. Um, but in limited, I'm not really super excited about it, but I'm certainly wanting to try it. Yeah. It certainly seems good enough to try. Now, Grave Betrayal, like, okay. Uh pretty awesome like enchantment, but a little slow for all non casual formats. Yeah, it's it's just pure casual. Yeah. It's cool though. It is super cool. If you kill something, you get Why it back as a zombie. Why is there so zombie. many wall of text in this set? There's just it's mono okay. wall of text. It's all right. Like Magic: The Gathering starts with various walls of text, and they were cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, some cool stuff. I I agree that there's a lot of words. I think in yeah. this set, but you know, it's Ravnica, and people give a lot of leeway. You know, like and they do want. Everyone's hyped about Ravnica, so they want to give uh, cards to every single like player. Right. They really pushed making everyone happy. Yeah. So I hopefully agree. the set is very good. Right. Because they did work really hard on that. Like for a casual player to look at this card and to read it and go like, wait a minute, if this is in play and I, you know, Supreme Verdict, Wrath of God, whatever, and I get all of their stuff, what? And it's bigger, what? And there's zombies, what? Like, it's on, like Donkey Kong. Like, oh my God, what if I call to the grave and then grave portrayal? <gasps> Dude, that's actually kind of a cool combo. That's cool. And Necropolis agent, or Necropolis regent, rather. There's, you know, there was a sort of a contingent of players who were, you know, like they saw this and they're like, eh, it's fine. It's not going to be good. I think in, again, any non-casual format. Yeah. But like this started out as like a bulk mythic price, and I'm yeah. like, uh-uh. <laughs> like every casual player I know, so you read this card and just be like. Yeah. Like, let me have it now. I want it now. I want counters on my duders. I want to smashy, smashy, smash. I want like to play this guy for six. Counters. Oh, my God. An absolute, like, you know, avalanche. And this is a card that just casual players just love this mm -hmm. stuff. Absolute. And, the you know, they gave him a mythic that just speaks to them. And that's why, like, Uvara Hellkite, I love this card. Like, you know, magic is a lot of things to a lot well, of people. I'm finally happy with, I'm like, mythics should be... Like the planeswalkers in the mythics mm -hmm. should be the chase rare stuff, but I'm just happy they're going back to these mythics that are like 
for sure All Stars and Limited, mm -hmm. but don't see constructed place, so we just don't have to have mythics that cost a ton, right? Like, yep. I I didn't like that at all. Like Scars Block, like mm. all of the mythics were so good yeah. and they were so playable. Yeah. And now all the mythics are like very casual friendly. Like they they feel like mythics. Elish yeah. felt like a mythic, but Consecrated Sphinx didn't feel like a mythic to me. Yeah, they just wanted it to be super crazy yeah. good, and so they just put the orange symbol but on no, it. But no, yes, of course this is a mythic, but it's not going to be constructed play because it's just too big and clunky. Yeah, it's big and clunky, but man, for the right type of player, this is exactly what they want. And that's what I love. I love mythics being the most ridiculous win more spells ever imaginably <laughs> played ever. Hey, do you like so dragons? Good. Do you want to make a lot of them? You know, like it's that so kind good. of stuff. It's awesome. For the Timmies of the world. Yeah. I'm a Timmy. I like big stuff. It's great. And also, quick aside, uh, interesting conversation with Aaron Forsythe talking about how control was bad. He sort of got on this thing of like, is control good? Is control bad? Why does control exist? Control decks. And he said, you know, there's this thing that I've sort of like learned that there are sort of control Timmies. The people who want to like you know rat the board and take care of all the problems and then yeah. just like lay the fatties yeah, and yeah. then just kill them with a huge monster yeah, yeah, yeah. and like that's the type of card that's just like yes I want to clear out all your fatties and then I just want to kill you with all my cool stuff and <laughs> getting all my cool counters <laughs> yeah that's a control deck now assassin strike yeah you're gonna look this is the this is the rule where in limited you're gonna pay whatever it costs to use the phrase to destroy target creature like the fact that it's controller discards a card high five but like Ultimately, if it says destroy target creature, you're going to play it. Yeah. It's going to be worth it. Mm -hmm. And honestly, at six mana, I think like what's going to happen is you're going to be at a board state where they only really have one or two cards left in their hand. Yeah. And, and you, you can may, get their last big spell. Yep. Exactly. You might be able to get the best thing that's going on over especially, there. Especially, especially when people are playing like scavenge and mm -hmm. overload, they're making all their land drops because they have these seven, eight, and nine like yep. mana requirements, mm -hmm. like or a lot of sevens and eights. So you're going to drop all your lands. You're almost always going to get spells because you. Most of the decks have to get this high of a curve. Right. And but you know, at the same time it can also kind of bite you a little bit because like when you make them discard a scavenge card or a scavenge card that's sort of aggressively costed, like the three three flyer, yep. you know, it, it may actually sort of hurt you a little bit to have used yeah, it on But man, destroy target creature, you're gonna play in limited, it doesn't matter. Awesome card. I'll go ahead and construct it. Catacomb slug. <laughs> One of the only slugs in magic. <laughs> There's very few. And it's so bad. And it goes like, aww. Just a sluggy poo. I'm going to call him a sluggy poo. He's your sluggy poo? Yep. He's my five mana, two, six sluggy poo. I just want to see what he does, how he kills him when he just like, <laughs> starts <laughs> eating it. He has a sword <laughs> stuck in him. <laughs> just right in his butt. The two, six, like, yeah, it's, mm. what, what? How do you rank these cards in limited? Can I just say awkward next? No, you shouldn't probably play that. If you're playing, that's one of those, like, I'm sorry, bro. Like, really, you're playing Slug and Limited? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, bro. Now, Cremate, it Girl, does things. come back. It's good. I, I, like, I it. like I like Cremate. I think they've made better, like, graveyard hate at sure. the moment. Sure, But Cremate does cantrip, so that's, like, really sweet. You can have a couple sideboard if you really want it. But if I'm playing a graveyard hate card, like, this is good in Limited. I played this card in Limited just it's to very beat, good like, limited. the Golgari decks. It's going to be the Scavenge decks, absolutely. Yeah. But... If you like want to play something like this in standard, you probably misbuilt your deck, and you probably should be playing Deathrite Shaman somehow. It'd probably be better. Probably. I mean, you know, and if you're anywhere near white, you play Rest in Peace. Yeah. Like, there's just other things you could be doing. And if you're in green, you just play, uh, like, if you're not in black and you're playing other colors, you just play Grefdigger Sketch. Yep. Do what you got to do. Yep. Dagger Drone Imp. Yeah, outclassing those two mana one one flyers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, All like, day. if there's any way to make them bigger with the lifelink, it's sweet. But scavenge. Eh, eh. There we go. We're always thinking. We're always thinking. That's like <laughs> it's hilarious. It's kind of a cop out. Like any yeah. creature, you're like, okay, no, okay. Well, if I scavenge onto it, like that slug is amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't think about that. Now here's my spoiler for the set. How do you feel about desecration demon? This was your spoiler. This was my spoiler. This is one of my favorite cards in the set. Really? Yes. Tell me about it. All right. So what this guy does, mm -hmm. black decks, are, are go, especially zombies, are going to have a tough time beating green decks. Mm -hmm. So you just slam a huge 6-6 six, six on the board. Rawr. And you're like, what up? I'm serious. Like, I think that's honestly a game plan. You use your Gagar charms to kill all the lingering souls and the 1-1 the, the one -one so they can't sack those. Right. You play this, then they're forced to either take it or let something die. Wow. This guy, this guy is an absolute force. He is yes. an absolute finisher. And 
it feels like they put in this drawback that always makes him not be that good or always makes him sort of be chump blocked or whatever, or pseudo chump yep. blocked. But ultimately, when they run out, he's going to kill you. And if he hasn't done that already, he's just sort of like staying on the board, you know, keeping your creatures in check, keeping your opponent's creatures in check. And he gets more work. angry and angry as it goes on. It's like, you stop me from attacking one more counter, time and I'll... Counter? Yeah. Counter? <laughs> counter? I mean, he can be chump block. He doesn't have trample, which I yeah. think... I, for, it just kind of feels like he might have had trample at some point, you know, because... Well, like, I feel like trample, trample because of the, the plus one, plus one ability makes me think he should have trample. Exactly, right? You mm -hmm. know, so, and that's sort of how he was balanced, but I think he yeah. might have been actually too good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I think he's very, very good. Good already, right. and I want to play with him. I'm, I'm excited to see sort of where he goes. Um, I love the fact that you know I think Wizards gave me a, a card that is a little sort of deeper than the surface. You know, my thinking was just like it feels like Lingering Souls would stop this <gasps> guy along. They're they're helping you out. They are. They are. They're like, yeah. what should we give Evan this time? Uh, mm. They they like to give instigator. me yeah they like to give me what I would describe as bad spike cards because you know like you, I was like I tried to be a spike but I wasn't very good at it and blah 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 now I'm so damn cautious it's ridiculous but like I, and, I, and I will contend that Warren Instigator was one four drop away from awesome <laughs> you're so cautious that they like they send you like let's just give them like the best card ever they like send you like two colorless green green eight eight trample when it attacks put two more eight eights in the play and you're like. It might see play. I'm not Maybe sure. Maybe if, yeah, the <laughs> environment crafts itself around. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes they just send me like fatty boom booms. Like mm -hmm. they sent me Vorapede, and I'm just like, I wish he was better. Boom. I mean, yeah, I know. Me too. Yeah, so Stop I'll, making good green five drops, wizards. I'll take a big green idiot to smash face. Now destroy the evidences next. It's another five mana destroy target land spell. And yeah, you just keep going and mill cards. Like, I guess it's sort of a Demir card in a way. But it's... It has to be. Like, like yeah, they're all that, in the shadow. That, that person is a Demir person. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is kind of cool. This has definitely given well, us a peek at Demir. Right, you know, and in the uh, in the flavor text, you know, everyone knew yeah. that Demir had done the damage and suspected as it had hired them. It's cute and all, and it's sort of flavorful. But yeah. ultimately, this type of card is not something you really want to be running in any well, no, they, they, non casual wizards, goodness. Wizards loves doing... Like, you remember the whole, like... <laughs> Oh, yeah. They love doing things like this. A bad card, but it's it's pushing the storyline for us. Yeah, it's literally they all it's doing that. It's yeah. giving you a little bit of hit of Demir, which is going to be very mill based, yeah. and it's giving you sort of a little bit of story and in, in the art and the whole bit. So, cool piece of art. I like it. Uh, drain pipe vermin. <laughs> yeah, such a cute. He's Skate, the skeet. cutest skeet, death skeet. rat ever. He's going to come and get you. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Another one one for I one with a very mediocre ability. I want to scavenge this guy and beat somebody to death with it. <laughs> All right. If, if, if you do that at the pre-release mm -hmm. and you beat me with it, I'll give you a high five. No. I said at the pre-release, once you do it. Oh, man. Plus I was about ring. to get you with that ring again. Yeah, that, that actually <laughs> was just absurd. Oh, Jesus. My whole finger was, vi my bone was vibrating. It just hit the bone <laughs> so bad. Drain pipe vermin, however, as a card... Not so good. No, I'm sorry. They're the bad cards that make the good cards look good. Launch They're, party. The, like, the rat is just like, only if I was a cat, then people would love me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, like, launch party, guys? I really? love... I love the fact they make a card called launch party. Yeah, and I love the art. The <laughs> art is so, so absurd. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I mean, you're killing a creature, right? I guess. But it looks like it's a rocket ship. He is. He's going through his little, like, circle, like a thing. But what, why? It makes no sense. Why does he have hooks for arms? Nothing about this art makes any sense. You're it is throwing so weird. the other creature at the other creature with hooks what? and flame <laughs> and zombies. It's just like, it's like, it's his torso is on fire and it's propelling him. It I makes will no say, sense. it doesn't make a lot of sense, but I will say on its core mechanical bit, it is a four mana instant. That's a big one. An instant that you will sack a die, you'll sack a guy that hopefully has scavenge, and then kill another creature, their best creature, and they'll lose two life on top of it. Yeah, these cards aren't that bad and limited as you would think. Yeah, well, and then you'll untap, and then you can like pay the scavenge I cost just, of whatever you sack. Yeah, I agree, but I just don't think I could come to terms with playing a card with that ridiculous of a piece of art. <laughs> Call. I know you're right, Paul. <laughs> you lie. You lie. Now, Mind Rot's in here. It's the best Mind Rot art ever. Yes. It's a white Mind Rot. It's so oh Orzov. My God. Orzov. Orzov. Woo! Orzov. 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 Such Orzovians. Like, oh, yeah. man. Look at that art. Look at that empty skull, man. Yeah, it's so retarded. I love this. Woo! It's so crazy. 
Now here comes the ogre jailbreaker. Um, one second, moving back to mine rot for a second because we got this feedback a lot. As people are, they're looking for limited and constructed advice here. Yes. So let's go back to mine rot for a second. Now in limited, it is in draft. Eh. No, okay, when you're in draft. In sealed, it's in, amazing. In sealed, you want to play all your mine rots. They're very good because yep. you want to take the draw all the time and your decks are very inconsistent. Right. So if they mulligan you over mine rot them, you win. Same thing if you're going to be on the draw in draft. Mm -hmm. Just board in your mine rot if your deck is like a little shaky because if they ever mulligan, the card says two colors black, you win the game. Yep. They, they don't really have a mana base. They're like just kept any six that could do anything. Right. And then you mine rot two of their cards, the game's over. Pretty much. Because you get terrific. infinite time and you already are up two cards, two and a half cards, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so board in your mind rots when you're on the draw. Even if they're see if they're a very aggressive deck, mind rots are actually really good because they go dude land dude land, and now on turn three, they have played five cards, three lands and two spells, and so they only have like four cards in hand. Mm -hmm. Even if they kept seven, so you get to take two of their cards. Now they're left with a draw step and two cards in hand. Mm -hmm. It's it's. Mind Rod is actually a very good card. Yeah, Mind Rod is one of those that is very sort of subtly powerful and not so much in constructed. I have seen it some constructed play against mm -hmm. control decks and things, but the majority of it is in limited, particularly in sealed. Yeah. This guy is an absolute all star. So don't, yeah, don't underestimate how good Mind Rod is or how good that art is. Yeah, the art. Amazing. All right. So Ogre Jailbreaker is next. We were talking a little bit about this guy earlier about how if you have a gate, um, you know, he can attack. And a 4-4 four, for four, 4 is no joke. No, this card is like very pushed if you can get a gate. If you can get a gate at all. And I mean, he's still a 4-4 four, four for 4 who's still going to be blocking all day. Jail, I don't know how a gate gets, breaks him out of jail, though. Like, the logic just doesn't make any sense. But he needs the gate so he can break out. Oh, I don't know, man. I'm just telling you, like, <laughs> oh, know. but I like him in limited. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's like, as a defender, he's fine. Yep. And then once you find a gate, which you will play off color gates for multiples of them, you just start attacking oh, with your four, four, sure. four, four. Yeah. Well, if you got, you know, some of this guy sort of late, I can also see how this guy can kind of be um, a shoot in draft. You know, I mean, you can get a bunch of them late because people don't really respect yeah. them, particularly at first. At the beginning of the format, no one knows how to draft it anyway. So I can imagine you getting a bunch of this guy and then you just like you pick up every gate ever because yep. who cares? Because this guy, you know, you play two of them. Play at any gate ever and just like beat them to death. With yeah, them. you you play it on turn four, you attack them and play another one on turn five. The game's over. They're yep. huge. It's terrific. Now, Pack Rat is next. <laughs> this card is good. The the card for the hoarders. The, yeah. Card this card is hoarders. not good. The card is good. In like I'm, I've ordered one for my cube. I think it's going to be good. It, it's good every turn. Or if it's late game and you topped at this, don't give me that look, Brad Nelson. Don't do it. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? For you to actually be able to evaluate a good card for once in your life. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Hey, bro. I'm kidding. I'm joking. Hey, I do. I know. I know. It's my Pack Rat I do love because I think that it's a card that just kind of gets out of control. I mean, it can, and but like the problem is, is... Oh, never mind. It makes a copy of Pack Rat. It makes never a copy mind. of itself. I thought it made a rat. Right, right. If it just makes a 1-1, one, one, like, eh. No, no, no. I thought it made a copy of itself. But not, but with, not the with the ability. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, no. But all of a sudden, you have two two twos, and then you have three three threes, and then they're like, and it's a two mana guy. Like it's just a two mana for obviously a one one. But you know, again, over time, like, and this is one of those cards that I feel like. Oh God, unlimited! You just play it on turn two, and then every turn, all you do is just make a rat. Yep. All right, never mind. This card is ridiculous. I'm wrong. <laughs> this card is awesome. Uh, I'm sorry. What was that? That's what I thought. It was silence. The set review is over. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. Flip the table. Oh, around. man. I like this card a lot. In Limited, I think it's going to be an well, all-star. Yeah, it's not going to be good in Constructed. In Constructed, I think it's got possibility. No, li I it's Limited, slow. it's going to be good. It's super slow. Dude, have you, you have not been playing Constructed. All right. The I last play some time, of Magic the, Online. The last time you played Constructed is when you came in and joked around and played out the, the Karn game. No, I know I it was. I played in camera. I play Magic Online from time to time. Fine. It's really good in Limited. Perilous Shadow is next. An 0-4 for 4. I like this card a lot. It gets plus two. Man. I really? love this card. This card is very good. Jesus, this card seems really, really good. It's very, very, very pushed. Now, again, this is unlimited, but wow. I mean, I've been playing 1-1 one, one Shades for four, man. Yeah, like, this the, card's retarded. For the same mana cost as what you played it for, it's a 4-8. And like, it doesn't have it's the, it's, doesn't have the restriction of being in a mono-black deck, so it can just go in a green-black deck 
and you pass green black plus two plus two green black plus two plus two. Yep. The card is like super pushed. It comes down and it's a wall when you don't have mana. So like all shades, you need the mana to do anything. Right. But this guy doesn't. It's so good. This is the best shade since Nantuko shade. This guy is really, really crazy pushed. I like just read. It's a I'm great like, limited card. The fact that it's an 04, you know, I mean, by itself, that's yeah. great. Normally, the shades, you'd have to pay four mana and be like an 01. Mm -hmm. You know, with this ability, it would just be an 01. You're like, yeah, good luck. This Thank is you. the most pushed shade in five years. It's been a long, long time since I've seen one that pushed. It's really yeah, it's good limited, good. not constructed, amazing limited. Shrieking the, the, Affliction. They fixed rack. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they <laughs> had to fix it somehow, and it's yeah. It's poop. It's poop stains. It's okay. I mean, you know, the rack's too good. Yeah. So they can't just reprint the people rack. People want cards like this, though. Like, a lot of guys, people love this kind of effect. They do. They want to... Discard, 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 play my rack. Right. Effects. They want to build around it. They want to make sure that, you know, you sort of work into their game and their game yep. plan and so on and so forth. So, ultimately, Perfect. bad and constructed, bad and limited, terrific in the casual decks that want to abuse it. All right. Slum Reaper. 4-2 for 4. I love this card. This card is good. Yeah, it's, it's just a throwback to... Uh, to uh, the 3-1. Uh, the the Fleshbag Marauder? Fleshbag Marauder, yeah. The, yeah, the 3-1 guy from Shards. But I, li I like the body, but the funny thing is, is it still doesn't kill Sigarta. How did you use kill Sigarta's, people? Oh, Sigarta's kick your butt. Um, Sigarta, like, I think Sigarta is going to be She's going like, to do some work. Yeah. In this new metagame, Sigarta, the host of the Herons, yeah. the card's going to be scary. Slum Reaper, however, is awesome. It's one more mana than the Fleshbag Marauder, but it's also plus one, plus one from the they Fleshbag Marauder. They sack their real guy. You get to sack your scavenge. Yeah, you sack whatever it is you want to give up, you know, the soonest or the most, uh, or the smallest, as it were, yeah. and it's great. Stab Wound, terrific artwork. It's, oh! it's not even... Oh! It's, good to, it's good artwork, but... Oh! I love this card because if you need to kill it, you kill it. If not, it's two damage a turn. Yeah. Put it on a 3-3 three, three and take one every turn. Put it on one of their like 0-2 or 0-3 or 0-4 defender guys and just like, yep, just eat it. Eat yeah, it. Take two. Every turn. Take two. Yep. I love the artwork though. So yeah, sweet. Yeah, the, the artwork's real sweet. <sighs> oh, don't play it constructed. <laughs> really good and limited. Ultimate price. Good card. Awesome card. I, I'm playing this card. I like the card. Yeah, um, a lot of people give it a, a bad rap, but the problem is you can't you can't be picky about your removal. Like you need to kill cards like Thrake Tusk and Restoration Angel. I can be picky about my and removal. And you can kill like the actual black creatures. I like how it kills black victim. creatures. You can't play victim, but like I also think you kinda might be married to the fact that it like you your two mana spells, like, you know, one more black, you gotta murder. Yeah, but it's too slow. It's slow, but it's still a murder. I want a spell that can kill like early spells out of, out of zombies. Yeah, but it doesn't do anything to Lot with Troll. So? Nothing does anything. Murder doesn't kill Lot with Troll. Well, do they tap out? It does. Well, yeah, but. And they probably will, right? I mean, you know, on curve, play Draft Messenger, attack with Lot with Troll. I think it's a deck that only can kill it with murder and, pil and, and pillar and stuff. You yeah. Can, you, can, you can wait to get regeneration. I agree. I mean, for me, Ultimate Price, I wanted this to work better in Legacy because, like, you know, Legacy, you got Tarmogoyf and you got Noble Hierarch and you got, like, you know, Mother Runes. It just and doesn't kill Knight. It, yeah, it doesn't kill Knight of the Reliquary. And that's such a huge, like, thing. You gotta be able to do Especially that. Especially when. Go for the throat kills everything anyway. Yeah, it, well, go, this go for the throat. Kill, this is way worse than go for the throat because it because can't kill, kill artifact artifacts. creatures. That's so sweet. that's so sad because like artifacts is not a color. It's just it's a and type. there's no black creatures in the format. I guess Bob. Uh, what were your desecration demon? In or, are you talking about legacy? legacy oh, yeah. sorry, in legacy. Eh, I mean, there's Tombstalker, I guess. I mean, sure, Tombstalker, yeah. All right, sure, I whatever. mean, Desecrating Demon, I, this can kill that, too. I like how they, how I think this card was, you know, pushed. It might have been double black or something at one point yeah. or three mana, but it's just two now. It's cool. Underworld Connections. This card is sweet. No. This card is awesome. No, no, no. <laughs> Look, man, I'm telling you. This no. It's not. I'm done with. No. Take it. Take my time. Take my time for this card. I'm, I'm going to teach you guys a lesson about magic. Tell me. I've been waiting on this forever. He has. I, I, di I didn't tell Evan what card it was going to be on. Whole set <laughs> review. <laughs> no. No. Okay. Anyway, I am going to give you a lesson on magic real Let's quick. This is a real one. This is an oh trading post is sweet. Right. 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 We're, we're, we're going to talk about uh, some dynamics about magic. So, Underworld Connections, three mm -hmm. mana, enchant land, tap, pay one life, draw a card. A lot of people were thinking it's sweet, mostly because it's a Phyrexian Arena that doesn't actually kill you when you don't want it to, okay. which is a big thing. Another thing is, 
the decks that like control black, blackish control decks, want to ca draw cards because they get into these weird states where they go, kill a guy, kill a guy, kill a guy, flood. Right. Because you just don't have enough removal spells or enough threats, so you want to draw cards to get yourself out of the situation. Okay. All this is great. Problem is new standard is so hyper aggressive that magic isn't actually about card advantage anymore. Mm -hmm. It's it's about life loss, like using your life as a resource, which is like just bleeding, taking damage. Okay. And and tempo. Tempo is the big thing. Like there isn't much card advantage. The the reason why like Thragtus is so good is because it's life gain, board presence, that's just tempo. And card advantage, which is two creatures. That's why the card is retarded good. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, same with messenger. It's card advantage because it has two lives. Sure. But there's no like card draw that is actually that good. Okay. So this card not only can draw you cards, but it's the sacrifice of tempo and life, which actually just like makes it way too slow. A lot of black's removal doesn't kill the zombies that you need to kill. Mm -hmm. So the only place that I found a home for this card is in potentially a sideboard of a zombie deck, but I don't even want it there. Disagree. Reasons? <laughs> Just look at it! It's awesome! There's a reason Phyrexian Arena is not reprinted anymore. They haven't reprinted it in like four years. Because that card is amazing. This card is very similar. In fact, maybe a little bit better because of the Arbor Elf interaction and <laughs> the fact that it doesn't have to kill you. Like the problem with Phyrexian Arena would be sometime, you know, your opponent would stall you out till you just died to your own Phyrexian Arena. Like, for what it's worth, I played Phyrexian Arena back in the day in Constructed in the Model Black Control deck with Persecutes and Kakushos and the whole bit. All I know... It was all, awesome. All I know is this feels like the red zone. Does it? We're arguing. We are. You guys let us know which one is right. I wasn't going to tell you. The last time we had one of these little arguments about a trading post. <laughs> I got to see a man about a post. <laughs> yeah, you did. And he <laughs> said that crap was terrible. <laughs> Moving on, we have our last card for our Golgari review, and that is Tavern Swindler. Yeah, this card is sweet. <laughs> this card is so weird. Cherry and I were just like talking about this right when we sat. We're like, this is the weirdest ability. And both of us were like, yeah, we're totally going to use it. Because <laughs> it's on a bear. It's on a bear. And the best part is uh, how degenerate of a magic player are you? Yeah. Is this yeah, getting yeah. activated on turn three for some players or right before you die? Every like every degenerate who loves the credit card game is going to love this card. Yeah. Just absolutely love this card. Ultimately, it's just a bear. And bears are playable. Yes. In limited, this will be a playable card just because the text box might as well be blank. And But it literally lets you flip coins, and I love flipping boing, coins. Boing, boing. And it's flipping coins, and you don't actually lose permanence. You just lose a life. Like, like you're just playing with your life. You know what you lose? Self-respect. <laughs> That's what you lose. No, how many, like, if, if done in infinity times, it does nothing. Uh -huh. But done the one time that it matters, you either win or lose a game because of it, and oh it's my awesome. Oh god, I guess. There's going to be some game that... It's going to be you so still bad. Yeah, you Tavern Swindler three times and won the flip every time, and therefore you won that game. Like, that's going to happen. <laughs> and ultimately, I enjoy that type of swing. <laughs> But come on. Most of the time it's going to trade on turn three. Yeah, most of the time it's literally just a 2-2 two, two for two. And that's but what happens when it doesn't have 70 signals and you block on turn three and it's going to trade? You're like, hmm. You just have to flip it, right? you got to flip oh the coin. God. Yeah, you have to. Like, like That's what it will take it to you, right? There's going to be points where you're just like, well, the only thing that's going to like stop me from losing is if I win this flip and drama. Well, I like, mean, literally turn three, it's trading off and it doesn't have summoning sickness. Right. And you do flip on that turn, though? Because there's no way you can tell what's happening in the game. You're both at 20 life. Oh, you're so greedy. The best part is, like, some people will be like, depending on how risky they want to be, they'll just instantly know. And you'll have David Ochoa just, like... <laughs> just thinking. Yeah, like, looking yep. 12 turns in advance as far as you can try to get. Yep, just trying to get all the way down deep. Yeah, and pa Paulo's going to say no. Right, Martin's absolutely. gonna be like, where's the coin? <laughs> <laughs> go, go, sweet, great, thanks. All right, so again, limited, fine as a bear, will be cute because it's gonna create these moments that you can't sort yeah. of get around. Uh, constructed, no. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of our Golgari set review in terms of the return to Ravnica set. And all I know is Golgari's sweet. Yeah, I like Golgari. It is absolutely one of my favorite guilds. 
I think they really pushed it this time. You know, before it had Dredge, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty happy that Dredge didn't return. Yes. <laughs> Way happier to have Scavenge, which is a very interesting sort of combat-based mechanic. The most cool. uh, game-breaking mechanic of all time. Uh, yeah, it just made you play non-magic, which was weird. Yeah. I liked it because it was really different and it was interesting. Like, well, the standard it, Dredge decks were pretty cool. Yeah, they were cool. Like, before it broke magic, it was really cool. Yep. Uh, and as I understand it, the Dredge mechanic actually came from Richard Garfield himself. Oh, cool. Which I thought was cool because he helped in the original uh, Ravnica design, mm -hmm. which was great. Um, but ultimately, because of, you know, stupid, random, like, bridge from below, whatever's. Yeah, printing bridge. Just turned it all upside down in and a bad way. It. All those and, cards. And like, how could they have done all of them? And Narcomita. In one set. Yeah, like, that was absurd. It's okay. Future Sight was ridiculous. So, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to appreciate you guys for sticking around with us. We have one more guild. We have one more video to go. And if you're in this far, they're going all the you way. You might as well just quit now. I'd what? be I'd be really bad at, at no. teaching people. No, no, no. No. All right. So, for Brad Nelson, I'm Evan Irwin. We are tapping the cards, and we'll see you tomorrow, because I like to do this, so you don't have to.